Cool. All right. Thank you so much to all of our speakers for speeding along in these lightning talks. We are going to roll along now to Dustin Freeman. Hello. Hey there. Ooh, I love the sparkly things behind you. <laughs> uh, it can, is my screen visible yet? It is not yet. And now it is. Wonderful. Um, hi, I'm Dustin. And today I'm going to talk about procedurally generating technology trees. So a technology tree uh, is using games to give players options over progression by adding new abilities or enhancing existing ones. Typically, at a given time, you have a small set of options to choose from. This, the set of technologies to choose from depends on the previous choices you've made. This, this lets you specialize over time. So unlocking new technologies is an instant, but typically you need to spend time plus some other resource researching that technology. Here we have a tech tree for the Protoss race in StarCraft II. Uh, skill trees for leveling up individual characters can act the same as tech trees. Here is destruction magic from Skyrim. This diagram is a little bit confusing because on the left one it flows down, on the right one it flows up. So before we go ahead, I need to explain some graph theory, which is a branch of mathematics to describe uh, graphs, but in this case we'll apply it to tech trees. So in this case, nodes are blue. These are positions in the graph, and in tech trees, these are the technologies themselves. Connections describe how technologies depend on previous technologies. These are the gray arrows in the graph. Sometimes these are called edges or in machine learning, they're also called weights. Um, a connection can describe the difficulty of researching a new technology based on the previous technologies you already know. The topology is the whole shape of nodes and connections. We could uh, have two tech, tech trees with the same nodes, but a different set of connections, and we'd say these have different topologies. We could also have two graphs with the same topology, but they may differ by the difficulty of researching each technology. And the difference would lie in the weights themselves, but they would have the same topology. So in real life, uh, research doesn't exactly flow like this in a very nice way. Uh, topology is not known in advance. Weights are totally unknown. Nodes are unknown. What possible technologies there are, we don't know. Uh, and technology can fail for surprising and unpredictable reasons. Uh, hello, <laughs> I am currently a research scientist at Facebook Reality Labs, and for the last 12 years, I've worked on researching new technologies. So I know a lot about this process. Generally, I've worked in the areas of spatial computing, gestural interaction, and embodied telepresence. And here are a few of the projects I've worked on. Um, currently, I work on what we call a neural interface. So I can't say much here, but I'll just briefly show some pictures that have already been in public. I work at, I work at a company that was formerly called Control Labs, um, but and we take one particular approach. Uh, academics and some startups take another approach. And there's a company called Neuralink, uh, which takes a different approach. All these technologies have the same goal, which, to, which is to improve the mapping between what happens in our brain and what happens with a system. But well, we're going through a bunch of different uh, alternate approaches. And we, don't, we can't really predict what will succeed or not, you know, technologically or culturally. So let's go back to a, a long time ago. A very long time ago, I worked on the Microsoft Surface at Microsoft Research. You probably remember this as the big ass touch table that was a parody video. Uh, this was actually a really wonderful interface. Uh, and while prototyping with it, I've had some of my most interesting multi-person experiences as we're playing a game or doing, doing some other activity together around a table. Um, honestly, and, and it just didn't get picked up. It just didn't work for some reason, which is surprising. We keep using big ass touch tables in science fiction. We know this would be cool and there's no real technological barrier. It all works. So why didn't this happen? Let's go to another technology that exists, but no one seems to want. Airships are obviously awesome. Now there was this one incident, but that was due to using hydrogen instead of helium uh, or hot air. So this incident shouldn't have been a problem. So why don't we live in a world of airships? I, I honestly feel our current timeline is maybe only one or two steps away from a timeline where there is a world of airships. So I'm now gonna, after the introduction, I'm now gonna go to a bunch of prior work in video games with procedurally generated tech trees. And I'll go through them pretty fast. Uh, in Sword of Stars, a Space 4X game from 2006, there is a fixed topology but at the beginning of the game, a role occurs for whether each connection exists. This is independent for each player. So each player will, will have a different technology tree. In Limit Theory, uh, which is one of those everything is procedural in space games, uh, this was kickstarted in 2012 and canceled in 2018, unfortunately. So here there's a core set of technologies with a fixed topology. You spend research on a node, and after a while, that node will spawn child nodes with variations on the current node. Uh, so you end up constructing a topology of research technologies as you go. This, it's kind of like you're 
doing dog breeding or something like that. Um, so that's, that's kind of interesting, uh, but you know, who knows how it actually would feel in, in practice. In Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, there is something called a blind research mode where the tech tree isn't visible. You can indicate a focus, which is one of discover, explore, conquer, or build. After some time, a random technology will be unlocked from that part of the tree. The hidden topology uh, is itself fixed, so it doesn't change. In Stellaris, choosing a technology to research is like drawing from a deck of cards. When you're making a choice of what technology to research next, you choose from three randomly presented um, options. From the graph theory perspective, there's not technically a tree in the background. Instead, technologies are divided into tiers. And to be able to draw a tier three technology, you must have researched a certain number of tier two technologies, for example. So I can see that this structure um, that Solaris presents makes it a little bit easier to cut down the number of choices you can make at any given moment. Um, but to be honest, when I play Solaris, I don't feel like I'm doing research. It's not, it's not that exciting to choose a technology. Um, I mean, additionally, in, all, in the first release of Stellaris, uh, different civilizations had different faster than, lab, than light travel technology. So you might have a civilization that can do warp. You might have a civilization that can do wormholes or uh, hyperlanes. However, this was removed for balance. It was hard to defend against all three types of travel at once. It's unfortunate that this trade-up has to be made. I think what I get excited about in terms of technology development is more the evocativeness of the universe it implies, not the balance choices I need to make. At least those, those are the games I'm interested in playing. Asura is a roguelike with a procedurally generated skill tree inspired by Indian mythology by a team out of Hyderabad, India. So I played around with this a bit while researching this talk, and it's actually quite slick. You should definitely check it out. Uh, for each game, the topology of the skill tree is freshly generated. There are around 80 skills, and in each game, only 16 are possible, spread out across four branches. As a player, you have uh, both a lot of interesting trade-offs to think about, but each game is forced to be quite different uh, thanks to the random number generator. In Civilization VI, VI's August update, they added something called a tech and civics, civics <laughs> shuffle mode that randomizes the topology. Techs are still sorted into eras to make everything feel sensible, um, but this can lead to some really interesting universes. So here, astrology depends on animal husbandry. What does that imply? What have we learned about the stars from domesticated animals? Um, have horses that are able to go long distances enabled us to make important astronomical discoveries we couldn't otherwise? That's so interesting. Um, here's another tech tree from Civ 6 that I generated. Uh, and this is randomly generated. I just rolled the dice a couple times. So here, all technologies in the world depend at a certain point on bronze working. What does this imply about the universe? I kind of imagine that everything high tech has to be built out of bronze for some reason. So this is the question I'm into. What does the tech tree imply about the universe? So one thing I do know is that kitchen sink universes are boring. And a kitchen sink universe is something I'm describing where everything is possible. If you can dream of a power, it is possible to eventually spend enough time on research or meditating or working out to get that power. Uh, comic book universes are really are particularly guilty of this, where everything seems to be possible. And we know in like the Dragon Ball Z universe, Goku can probably do something as long as he works out enough. So there's not really interesting choices. It's more about just quantity of effort. So to sum up all my thoughts, I built a procedural tech tree, gen tech tree generator where each technology gets assigned an evocative description. So you can check it out here, uh, and this link will appear again later. Um, so let's talk about describing technology accurately. So a trivial technology could be invented by accident, like the wheel. A technology which requires a massive undertaking requires an actual project, you know, like nuclear power. Some technologies are so big, it requires work on a civilization scale. So fixing climate change is probably in this category. And some technologies may be in the category where it's possible, but it's barely functional. Uh, they sort of work, they sort of don't. So curing cancer might be in this category. We don't quite know. Some technologies never work, they're crapshoots. So we tried a few times to make telepathy happen. It's probably not gonna happen. Fortunately, this seems pretty obvious and we as a civilization don't worry about this too much. On the other hand, some technologies could be unclear, costly crapshoots. Nuclear fusion might be in this category. It's been 10 years away for maybe a half century at this point. It might never work, no matter how many resources we put into it. And finally, technologies may be possible, but once we have them, they may not really be desired by anyone. I think this is the most interesting category for me. So for example, the Ottoman Empire neglected to pick up the printing press for a few centuries after Europe did. Uh, this is for a variety of really unclear reasons. Um, it's possible Arabic was too hard to print. You know, it was, de it was deemed sacrilegious to, 
to print religious texts, or the book copy in Guild was just too powerful. I've listened to a historian's talk about this recently, and we, we don't really know. Um, so sometimes technologies are possible, we just don't do them for some reason. Um, hey, this is pretty similar to big ass touch tables, or airships, or telepresence conferences, which seemed like an absurd idea uh, a year ago. Um, I feel like these kind of technologies are all in waiting for a surprise factor, cultural or otherwise, to make them real. So look at 2020, everywhere you need to go, you need to quarantine for 14 days. So traveling fast by plane doesn't really matter to anyone anymore. Is 2021 finally the year that airships could become a thing? I mean, you're going to need to wait several days after you travel anywhere anyway. Might, might as well go slowly in uh, a seat of luxury. Um, but look, let's look at some real examples from my tech tree generator. So here's one universe. I'm your one minute warning, Dustin. Thank you. <laughs> so here's, here's one universe. Uh, in this universe, AI, not really desired by anyone. Bioengineering, it's an unclear crapshoot. We put a lot of money into it and we get nothing out of it. Bionics and cybernetics though, totally trivial, trivial. Easy to modify our bodies and turn them into machines. Here's another universe. AI is trivial. Bionics and cybernetics, obvious crapshoot. We don't spend any time on it. Bioengineering, it barely works. So these are interesting, evocative, different universes um, that I think are more interesting than just a random topology tech tree. Uh, here's another example about time travel, but I'm gonna actually skip this one. Uh, so from this spot in my tech tree, which is about proc gen tech trees, I see two interesting things ahead. First, mapping cross-domain discoveries. So sometimes we invest a lot of effort in a domain that is important to us, and there's a chance of discovering something in an alternate domain. So a game reviewer might call this unrealistic, but this happens in real life. So the microwave was a communication domain technology. Well, it was funded by communication domain technology research, and we ended up uh, with a food processing technology out of it. Uh, another thing I'd like to try describing is domain progression. So for example, in the history of compu computing, the media that we use for computing was wood, then metal gears, then gas and glass, like vacuum tubes, now sand, um, like transistors, and now it's qubits. Although that might be a crapshoot, we're not sure. So thank you for attending my talk. Fortunately, in this universe, communication is trivial, so you can reach out to me here. Uh, and I'll see you around the telepresence conference space. Thank you so much, Dustin. Uh Wish we had time for even more. Fantastic talk. Hopefully you can uh, follow up a bit more on it later. I would love to see that turn into a full talk next, next year. Let's be honest. Moving on.